Today, we are going to have a great show. We're going to talk about all of the current events that are happening right now. And we're going to be taking live calls at 2244 marf That's, again, 2244 Stick around. It should be a really good one. We'll be right back right after this. Nothing in this show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is, again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support, and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. Uh, can't say thank you enough. Alright. Alright, what is going on? It is Adam AK Marf, and this is Marfugal News. Today we have a great show lined up, and of course, we have a ton of stuff to uh, to go over. So I just want to remind everyone if you haven't already, make sure to go over to our website, marfugalnews.com, and sign up for our notifications. If you sign up for our notifications, you won't uh, miss them and get them three days late, like most platforms are sending you. Also, you can sign up for our private email alerts. Uh, again, that all it requires is an email address, very simple to do. And of course, when we do send out our our letters, then you will get them. And then, of course, if you want to follow along, you can get a full bibliography of all of our sources for today over on morefuglenews.com. Now, when you see it's very easy to navigate, it is all done by thumbnail. You'll look for today's thumbnail. Something is wrong. Uh, conflict in space. Above us, something is not right. Now, when you click that, you will see that it brings you to every single article, tweet, video, picture, document that we show you here today will be right there. That way you can go back and read it uh, retrospectively. You can go back and finish it. Uh, again, there's a ton of stuff over there. At the very bottom, there's overflow. We'll talk about that at the end of the show. Tons of extra content there. And then over on the right, any affiliate that, uh, product that we end up talking about during the show, very easy to click one of those boxes. Those are all of direct links to our code or sometimes it just puts it in there. So again, that helps us out and you get an awesome product out of it. All right, let's bring in my co-host slash internet brother, Dex James. What is going on and how are you doing? Well, hello, Adam and hello, Fugle fam. I have never been better. You know, I have been having, uh, maybe, okay, maybe it's this. I've been having issues uh, hearing since I got the cough cough. I don't know if it's because of something nasal, but... It's just wild. I've already taken two Z packs, and it's, it seems like my uh, right ear is like losing hearing. It's the weirdest thing. Uh, Dex, you didn't have any of that when when you got the cough, cough, did you? No, but um, you know, my wife had a little bit more of the ear ringing. She already had it to begin with, so I think it intensified some. So probably something to do with it. <clears throat> yeah, it's really weird. I have to pop my ears like I'm driving over a mountain. At least 70% of Americans will experience temperatures above 90 degrees on the first day of summer. So, first of all, uh, it got really hot here. I am actually, it's super hot in my house. We had to turn on both air conditioners and it's still not doing much. Uh, if this is kind of a sign of how the rest of the summer is going to go, uh, it is not going to be fun for us here either, uh, which, you know, a lot of Midwest states, of course, get into the hundreds and into the nineties all, all day, every day. Uh, we don't. So when it gets super hot here, it's, it, we're not acclimated to it and we're not set up. In fact, a lot of people in the Northwest don't even have, uh, you know, air conditioners. So I, I am fearful of, of, of course, people perishing and dying, uh, because they're just not prepared for this. I think this summer is going to be worse than in the pre previous three years, which uh, I know that they've telegraphed that. They said that, uh, but I believe it. Uh, Dex, go ahead. Well, yeah, make sure uh, in this article, take a look at some of these pictures of the roads that are collapsing overheat or cracking. It's, I mean, this is kind of, um, 
I don't know how often this happens where anyone else lives, but I've never I've never seen it where I am. I think it's probably because these are northern uh, states uh, that probably are more their roads are produced more to withstand ice. And so when this heat hits them, they start cracking to pieces. Well, so uh, 405 uh, in Seattle is was actually shut down because of cracking. And what's crazy is I don't even think it was because of the heat, uh, but it, it may have contributed to it uh, the first hotter day. But uh, again, we have a lot of infrastructure damage going on right now, and it's really weird. Uh, if you have uh, infrastructure damage and something big is going on, like they're shutting down freeways near you, uh, let me know. Email me, tweet, put it in the comments down below. I'd love to hear about it uh, because it, it seems like everybody I've talked to today uh, and yesterday have said that there was some major highway closed down for some reason. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, but besides that, of course, now they're showing, you know, these pictures show streets and, and roads basically cracking under the, the heat. Very, uh, very discerning to say the least. Now, remember, you can call in at 2244 marf You're going to want to, of course, press option four once you get to our phone tree. That number is going to be scrolling down below. Anytime you see this screen, you'll see that black bar and you're going to be able to call in. Now, it does have the last four uh, numbers if you don't have a phone with letters on it. Uh, MARF is 6273. Remember, option four. All right, and then moving on, we have a ton to go over today and calls. So, man, this is packed. Elon Musk's SpaceX could start building military starships under Pentagon's new plans. It says we could soon see militarized starships blasting off for orbit under ambitious new proposals by the U.S. Pentagon. It says the Pentagon has reportedly partnered with Elon Musk's SpaceX to look at the possibility of using the company's reusable rockets to send military supplies into orbit. It not only says that, it says the idea is that it would be able to drop supplies anywhere in the world within 60 minutes without the need for a cargo plane, giving the U.S. military an incredible rapid response tool. Uh, U.S. Transportation Command, which is part of the Pentagon, says it could quickly move uh, critical logistics during time-sensitive contingencies and deliver humanitarian assistance. We talked about this before. Uh, as far as being able to move things, was that different? Wasn't that hypersonic? There was something that they could shoot something out of a rocket and, and get it anywhere in 60 minutes? Uh, or was that the same thing? That was them talking about it going up in a rocket and then dropping down from space or even sitting up there. What if they have, you know, basically containers sitting up and floating in space or something? That's that's pretty uh, pretty extraordinary to say the least. Now, uh, as far as when we previously covered this, think about the reasons why they would be doing this and why are they doing it now? Obviously, it's very convenient to be able to drop something or weapons or whatever it may be in just 60 minutes in pretty much any place in the world. Uh, but is there something else going on? This also is meaning that uh, Elon is now directly connected with the uh, Space Force military as far as possibly building uh a military ship. I mean, we're talking about him now possibly becoming a military producer and producing actual vehicles for the military. So I've talked before, everybody thinks he's a hero. And again, he may be, but again, he has all of these uh, contracts with the U S government. Now, of course he, he may just be the, the guy they buy it from, but it, he's connected in every way. He's don't you know? Uh, he's boring tunnels under cities, which again, that would be the same way that you would do uh, bunkers and dumps and things like that. Uh, he is doing Neuralink, and that has a military aspect to it. Uh, Tesla, he's using his backup batteries for U.S. grids, uh, and then of course with SpaceX, he's using Starlink, and Starlink is uh, actually already has sensors for hypersonic objects. So he's got a lot of connections uh, to the U.S. government, and now this is just one more. So this is this is like we're talking Star Wars stuff here, but it, who knows? Maybe it's just for actual you know, I guess supplies to go up and then float around and then drop down when they need them. What do you think about this? I'm going to turn on the chat here for a second. By the way, ask me. Thank you, Marf and Dex. What's going on? Moxie 71, Chance Paladin. Thank you for modding. We've got KG Stasic, uh, A Payne, Kimberly Clemens over in the uh, chat. Thank you 
Uh, thank you again for uh, getting a, a renewal on your badge. Uh, it looks like Nomad did the same. Smooth, uh, smooth Truther, Grand Caravan, Ja Farm 2. Thank you, guys. I hope everyone is having a good night. Thank you already. 2,600 have popped in. I love you guys. Thank you. And then uh, let's pop over and I will turn this chat on. So let's, uh, and it will take a second to populate. Thank you, Susan Jane. I appreciate that. Thank you for uh, the super chat there. And then Blockchain Chad, thanks for subscribing. Uh, and then uh, Vlock, thank you for subscribing, Mr. Bucks. And it looks like a few other people that popped in. Mommy Monday, Ian Whitaker, thank you for subscribing. Liberty, Canine Unit, Rowdy Yates. And then uh, looks like John Thomas and Bonnie Holzman. Thank you so much. I appreciate your uh, support uh, over on Patreon. Thank you. All right, so what do you guys think is is up with this as far as making the uh, these ships and what is going on as far as the supplies? Do you think that there could be another reason for this? I want to get your opinion on this because obviously there is a lot going on. Uh, is this because something is about to start? We've already had the DoD press conference saying that uh, space is fully weaponized now by Xi and Vlad. So what the heck is going on with that? And then uh, we'll, we'll talk about space in a little bit at, closer to the end of the show and uh, bring up some other stuff that is going on at the same time. Strava Fitness app used to spy on is military officials. Unidentified operatives have been exploiting a security weakness in the popular fitness tracking app Strava to track the movements of is defense personnel. According to an is open source investigative group, Fake Reporter. Uh, I love how they... Their group is actually called Fake Reporter. It says the flaw has also made public the precise locations of a number of extremely sensitive sites in the country, including Army and Air Force outposts, uh, Mossad headquarters, as well as bases belonging to military intelligence. So we talked about it yesterday. There is a ton of these tit for tats. Uh, there was two events, and it's like every single time they strike them, they strike them, they strike them. Uh, they... Uh, the other side just got hacked. Then a week before they got hacked, it, it's like it's always a back to back. And with them, it's mostly uh, with I country ran to the store and is they are basically both going back and forth every single day. It's it's less of a turnaround. And then U.S. economy will grind to a halt in the second half of 2023 and the following year won't be much better. Bank of America says as it slashes its growth forecast. So this is coming from a massive bank, uh, Bank of America, essentially saying that growth will be halted. Uh, not not only that, that it will come to a grinding halt. Uh, that is freaky considering 2023, 2024 are where everyone is predicting everything bad to go down. And unfortunately, there's going to be a lot of bad things that are going to go down in the next couple of years. I think that that's kind of, I sh that should just be a fact. But again, that is my opinion. But we can be positive about it and keep up, um, I guess, we really have to look at this and have a perspective on it. Uh, this is something, this is why preppers are going to do well in the next few years, is because they're prepping and they're doing things now instead of later. This is really important. Uh, if you notice, the, the real reason that people are really going to be screwed up is because they weren't prepared for it, they weren't following along, and they didn't realize what was going on. Uh, every day, this has been a slow motion collapse, and it's going to eventually collapse. If you don't believe me, go look at what our money is based off of. It's, it's a, again, it's a, uh, right now it's a petrodollar, which uh, supposedly they're getting rid of petrol. They're not going to have uh, gas run the world anymore. We're all going to be in electric cars and all of this. If they're going to do that change, they basically have to break down the current system, which is everything is literally, uh, you know, stacked on top of oil. And if they stop doing that, or if we run out in the next 30 years, 40 years, then either way, it's got to change. And I think that that's what we are witnessing right now. It is a complete and utter uh, reset button. And we are the victims of this. So preppers, when they have extra stuff, extra food, extra water, and they think down the line, when you think out scenarios, you do basically war games of what is going to happen. This is why a lot of us are going to be better off than anybody else. Again, it's not going to be good, but I'm telling you, Fugle fam, we're going to be a whole lot better than most people because most of you are actually listening to, to the advice that this community has. Again, this community is telling you all of the tips and tricks. The people in the chat, 
There's right now over 3,000. These people have all sorts of knowledge. If you have a question on how to do something as far as prep goes or growing stuff, this is one of the best audiences in the world to ask. Uh, my wife was basically able to answer any gardening question within a, a second with this audience. So again, th let's have a positive outlook. This is not looking good. It says in a note published on Friday, two days after the Federal Reserve hiked interest rates by 75 basis points, analysts said that the Fed was too slow and aggressively uh, tackle inflation which is currently running at a 40-year high and is abruptly scrambling to get on top of it. Now, B of A sees GDP growth slowing to near zero by the second half of 2023 due to the impact of tighter financial conditions. So while at the risk of recession this year is low, uh, Bank of America sees a 40% probability uh, starting next year, and 2024 isn't looking much better as analysts see only a modest rebound. So think about how the streets are going to get. Think about how many people are going to end up homeless because of, of the economy and everything else that is happening right now. This is why preppers are getting extra stuff, and including bang bangs. Everybody is loading up on everything, uh, including the elites. They know that all of the people down below are grabbing clips and grabbing, uh, you know, ammo. Whoa. So it's like this is this could get very, very crazy very, very quick. Remember, if you want to call in on this or any of the other stories, you can call me at 2244 marf I would love to meet you and talk to you, if, especially if you're a first-time caller. You are highly encouraged to call in. That's, again, 2244 marf and that number is scrolling right there. Uh, thank you. Over 3,000 popped in so far. You guys, thank you so much, everybody that is in the Fugle fam. Uh, let's see here. All right, let's turn this off for a second. And then let's go back over here. Uh, thank you, DLive. Thank you to the DLive, DLove crew. We've got Moxie. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And then Kimbria. Thank you. And then uh, Sean Penrod. Thank you. It says, keep on keeping on. And and did uh, a Ninja Gini. Thank you. Ask me about my, and of course, Shen Penrod. Uh, thank you so much. Appreciate that. And Renegade Petey. You guys, thank you for supporting our small independent channel here. I do appreciate it. And thank you for uh, sharing out everybody else. All right. So it looks like we have our phones going here. And it looks like we already have Awakened Alliance 2. And we're going to be pulling him on. And Dex, while you get a him on, I do want to remind everybody uh, there is uh, time running out on the sale for $170 off on certain packages of energy. Now, if you don't know what this is, it is a solar generator, which essentially uh, means that you can power it not only by solar panel, you can charge it in your house, you can charge it in your car. But this is something that I personally use to actually power my studio. So I've got four uh, uh, four panels and then, of course, uh, a Flex 1500 now with two batteries. Uh, got a, I finally got a second battery for it. And, of course, this is able to back up not only my studio, but my router and then a few other things. And this is a really amazing system because it is extendable. It's expandable. You can actually get up to 96 batteries with just one top base unit. Uh, so you can essentially get as much power as you want. If you need uh, if you need another 200 hours of power or 300 hours of power, you can decide how much you need. Uh, you can do that. That is so. Uh, that is one of the great parts, but also it is absolutely silent. There is no sound that comes off of it, which means if something goes down or if SHTF happens, nobody from three blocks is going to be hearing you. That's the huge downside of gas generators. On top of that, gas generators cannot be inside the house unless you have some crazy system. Uh, essentially, they put out the, the na nauseous gases. Uh, this does not. On top of that, this can... Uh, uh, be carried with you and be taken everywhere. Go to marfuglenews.com slash energy. The ship date has been closer and closer, and now it is uh, just a, a matter of weeks out. So make sure to get over there. Code marfugle. That's marfuglenews.com slash energy. When you use that code, you can get upwards of $170 off, and you'll be supporting our channel at the same time. Thank you, everybody, in advance for going over and checking it out. Um, by the way, it, that doesn't have to be for the end of the world. That could be for a rolling blackout for summer. That could be for a storm, a hurricane, a tornado, an earthquake. This is, uh, it's a great system because it is completely independent and you can basically, uh, power, power uh, almost everything. All right. 
And uh, before we uh, talk about this, let's get uh, Awakened Alliance on the phone. Awakened Alliance, are you live? Yes, sir. I'm here. How you doing, Armar? Hey, how are you doing? So uh, it sounds like you had... Uh, did it, is did you say your phone uh, was listening in on you? Is that right? Yeah. Uh, it's, I, I, it seems like it is... Uh, it's picking up what we're thinking and then giving us ads for, I mean, words that things that you don't talk about, things that you've never searched for, and then ads will be popping up. I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of your listeners have noticed this. Oh, yeah. No, uh, I, have you know, yourself noticed this? Oh, yeah. Well, so they, they say that it's because of the advanced algorithms and uh, how they track your searches, and essentially they can just predict. But there's been times, and I bet you everybody in the audience can attest to this, there have been times where my phone shows me something that is so utterly specific that I have just talked about. Uh, you know, you'll, you'll talk, you have never searched anything on your phone, talk about organic bananas or something, and it will pop up and it will say, you know, are, do you need organic bananas? Go right down the street to this place. It's absolutely scary to think right. that they're lying about it and it is listening. But, I, I mean, we know it's listening to us, uh, but it's whether who is actually listening on, on the other end. We know that CIA and we know that yeah. the, uh, the U.S. government has been caught listening and watching our phones. Absolutely. I, I, I utterly, utterly believe this, that it's not just that, because I've had things pop up that I have never spoken of, never searched for, only thought about, and like a day, between a day or two later, it, it's popping up, and I've ne it never uttered the words. I'm trying to think of what it was that's happened to maybe three times. But things I would have never said or looked up. Now, can so, I? So I, I don't know how they're doing. I don't know how they're doing it, but I mean that's that's my opinion. Now, can I ask uh, you? It if says you want to give it. You're from Virginia, yeah. right? Go ahead. Yes, sir. So, around where you're at, have you? Uh, are you in a big city, or are you in a tiny city, or in a suburb, or are you kind of around a lot of people right now? Uh, uh, well, the biggest city around was, would be like around Bristol Motor Speedway, but that's about 20 miles from me. I live in the Appalachian Mountains. So can I add, so you, it I sounds live. like you're a little bit farther out, like you're kind of in the country, or would that be correct? Yeah. I, yeah, I'm a hick from a stick. Hey, do you, <laughs> do you ever see, uh, do you ever see out in the country people, on their phone, just sitting at stop signs forever. Do you guys get that out out in the country as well? We do, we do. Um, uh, yeah, going down the road, people about running you out of the road and stuff. It's it's pretty bad. It's worse than I mean, drunk even drivers. Out in the country, it happens. It's it's yeah, a, it is. Yeah, it truly is. They go over the lanes. They, uh, we, I was on a one lane and a one lane with no divider. And this guy was on the full-on side that I was driving on. I had to stop, honk, and do my lights. And he then got over back in his lane. And I saw, I mean, I'm watching him. And he's holding the phone up way above the window, just sitting there like this. And then doing this. And I'm like, how how in the hell do people do this? Our, our, right. uh, it's changed the way that people drive. I'm surprised that, uh, yeah. that they're having uh, quadrupled the accidents. Who knows? Maybe they did. Well, thank you for thank you for calling. Is there one more thing you want to say before you go? I, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, last week I had a a, a pew pew a freedom seed uh, malfunction on me and it blew shrapnel in my chest and stuff. And uh, need some and prayer. Part of my finger and I play I play guitar and I my original channel. Uh, my ex hacked my account and got me blocked out of this. So this is my newest channel, and I'm trying to rebuild. So, uh, I mean, if you give me a shout-out, I'd appreciate it, buddy. 
Well, we, we already put your channel on the screen, and I hope that uh, the Fugle fam at least give you a chance. And again, thank you for calling in Awakened Alliance 2. Uh, appreciate your call, and uh, if it's your first time, don't make it your last. All right, that was Awakened Alliance 2. Uh, if you want, the link is over on marfuglenews.com under caller info. We try to support everybody. If you are new here, uh, remember, always be considerate of, of the callers and other creators. There's a ton of creators in the Fugle fam. We try to push up everybody we can uh, to an extent, of course. Uh, and then uh, make sure to, of course, uh, say Marf sent you. All right. And then we're going to pop back into the this is this is pretty funny. Uh, Bigfoot tracks found in snow after something funny, a uh, very unhuman attacked house. It says a man found some possible Bigfoot tracks after something very unhuman attacked his house by throwing rocks at it. Sharing his story on Facebook page Bigfoot Believers, Ryan Edward explained that he was smoking a cigarette at 2.30 a.m. when he heard loud noises coming from the house next door, which had recently burnt down. It says then he heard rocks or something landing where he was standing and rushed inside as he was so freaked out it says exiting out of another door to finish his smoke he then heard a louder thud it says quote i immediately went i don't know why i almost added an, an accent to that i immediately went out upstairs i don't know why i just hear this guy. i immediately went upstairs and talked to my fiance christine See, already, he doesn't sound like that, but to tell her what I experienced, and she said she just heard the loudest unusual uh, scream or howl she has ever heard in her life. Oh, that is creepy. And it says, this is when I knew something, uh, uh, this is when I knew I wasn't crazy and something very unhuman may have just been in the woods throwing things at me. This is why, man, uh, at our cabin and like when I'm way out in the woods and there's nobody else around it's it's pretty creepy uh, I've told you guys before we we my sister and I walked up on a uh, I was really little my sister was probably 16 or something I don't know she was she's 10 years older than me so she was walking with me and we saw uh, Satan worshipers in a circle full-on get up with cow tongues on sticks and then they started chasing us and we just ran through the woods and ran 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 I, I ever since then I have not liked the woods. Again, I love the woods during the day, but at night the woods is crazy. I would never ever go on naked and afraid. It says uh, we went out the next day and investigated what we saw and was like un unlike anything we've ever seen in our flower gardens. This includes clear trampling, uh, a boulder that put a dent in the house uh, in the woods next door, sticks and logs over the fence in unusual patterns, and apparently. There's these gigantic uh, footprints. Holy moly. So most of these are hoaxes, as many people know. Um, do you believe in Bigfoot? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, Dex, do you believe in Bigfoot? Have you ever seen anything in the woods like a Bigfoot or a Yeti? I know that uh, Georgia, I don't know what the, the landscape is like there. I'd, but I'd like to believe in them. Um, I'd, I'd like to think there's something there because enough people have seen to have seen them and there's been enough, you know, circumstantial evidence about them. But uh, I've never actually seen one, so I couldn't 100% tell you. But I think there's something out there. I'm in Bigfoot country. This is where they go and film. And this is actually where all the hunters go, the Bigfoot hunters. They go up to areas like Forks where they shot Twilight and things like that. Uh, but, you know, I have not had a personal experience with it. I do know that there's tons of Fugle fam that have had experiences because we've gotten pictures and videos. Uh, there was pretty a pretty good compelling video. I don't know if you guys remember that about two years ago. And then a picture that had somebody that if it wasn't a Bigfoot, it was definitely a person in a costume. Uh, it was it was pretty creepy. Uh, by the way, Dex, I emailed you that email. It looks like Mr. MB333 ended up uh, covering it, but not from the same person. So a person sent me a photo. In fact, let me see if I can forward you this real quick of something in the sky. It was really, really crazy. Uh, let's see. Oh, man, that was um, really quite nuts. So let's see here. Just go to my scent. Okay, and then I click on this guy. 
But yeah, it would be cool to show these pictures. I don't know if it was uh, Mike H. And what's crazy, Mike, is a lot of people saw that across the country. Mr. MB33 did a, a video on it, and they say it's a SpaceX thing, but man, it looks like something going through a portal. Uh, there's just all sorts of crazy stuff, and I, I, I just wonder how much of that is, you know, is SpaceX, and if, if any of them aren't. Uh, but I'll, I'll try to do this when we're, uh, when we have our next, uh, our break here, and I'll, I'll send it over. All right, and then, let's see. Okay, there we go. So, do you believe in Bigfoot? Let me know. I think, I, I think that. Uh, I have definitely had some stuff stalk me in the woods, but usually it's a uh, big lion or bear or something. And then we have Mexico president will ask president B to look into WikiLeaks Assange case. Apparently he's, uh, he's going to, uh, said on Tuesday, he will ask U.S. President J.B. to address the case of WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, saying Mexico would open, it, it open its doors to him if he were released. British Home Security uh, Priti Patel on Friday approved the WikiLeaks founder's extradition to the United States to face criminal charges. charges. Assange's wife vowed to fight using every possible legal avenue. It says, I'm going to ask President B. to address this issue. Humanism will prevail. Uh, Lopez Obrador said at a regular news conference, it says Mexico could open its doors to Assange if he was released, he added. It says the Mexican president is set to meet his U.S. counterpart in July after skipping the recent U.S.-hosted summit of the Americas in Los Angeles to protest the White House's exclusion of the governments in Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua from the event. Assange is wanted by the U.S. authorities on 18 counts, including a spying charge related to, uh, to a WikiLeaks release of vast troves of confidential U.S. military records and diplomatic cables, which Washington said had put lives in danger. Now, most people are looking at this as that he was a journalist releasing information given to him and that he should be protected as a journalist and should not be charged. But again, we don't know if there's anything else that we don't know about uh, that they actually have evidence of him doing. But what the public sees, it doesn't, you know, it, it, it would set a huge precedent for journalists all over the world uh, for him to actually uh, see those charges. Uh, Dex, as far as Assange, this is this is going to be a huge deal, and most people aren't even going to notice. As far as if he does end up getting extradited, if he does end up here, and most people are like, well, he is. Uh, there's been so many weird things that have happened. He could just disappear. He could uh, have a mysterious illness. He could, uh, they, they should, they would just lose the camera footage, you know, something weird. Yeah, I wouldn't trust anything right now when it as it relates to him. But I do wish that you know that they find a solution um, for him, uh, and and you know that he finds a way to you know, assuming he's committed no major crime, um, then I you know I would hope that somebody would take him in and give him a place. You know, it used to be Ecuador. Now maybe it'll be Mexico. But I think a lot of it depends on what our administration wants to do with him, right? And it's, you know, even past administrations didn't do anything and they could have. So, well, people look at it as he's either a hero or a traitor. Which do you think? In fact, uh, I'm going to do a quick. Let's see here. Let's do a quick poll. I have a guess on which one we will see more. OK, so. All right. I want everybody to vote one for hero, two for traitor and three for undecided or other so one for hero two for traitor and three for undecided or something else look at that lots of heroes wow a few threes there oh very i mean almost no twos though that is insane um, I mean, even even on really clear subjects, you always have kind of the opposite end of that. Wow. If, if you end up going into the replay, go to the chat replay and look at how many ones there were. were. So 
you could see why other presidents and other people are jumping in and saying, hey, I'll, I'll support him or I'll, you know, I'll do this. If you look at the actual case of what he did, unless there's something we don't know about, most believe that he should be protected as a journalist. Uh, Susan Jane, I appreciate that. Thank you so much for your support again. And then everybody else that just popped in. It looks like over 4,000 now. Thank you, guys. So, And I, I apologize, guys. I'm, I'm uh, my reading it. My eyes, uh, my nose. I think I've got something with my nose, but it's putting pressure on my eyes. The, uh, It's like a brain fog. I had the cough cough a few weeks ago, and it, it's still lingering, designed in a lab. All right. U.S. Navy and I, round of the store, have tense encounter in the Strait of Hormuz. Now, most of you know why this would be important. I don't know if you remember a, a video. I believe it was, it was the Strait of Hormuz. Do you remember the video of the guy saying, oh, in, you know, we'll take seven countries in seven years and, you know, they'll, they'll be a fantastic Freddy and they'll, they'll paint a boat that looks like this and, and uh, they'll end up, you know, attacking themselves and it will start off everything. And I believe he said it, will, it would be in the Strait of Hormuz. Was it in the Strait of Hormuz or was it a different one? Dex, I, I believe if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, we've shown that video clip before on this channel, but uh, this is anything that goes on in the Strait of Hormuz or any of these uh, major waterways we pay attention to because this is how WW3s start, or at least this is how it could. The U.S. Navy said today, uh, Tuesday that its forces had a tense encounter with paramilitary Revolutionary Guard in the strategic Strait of Hormuz. The Navy's Mideast-based 5th Fleet said that the three guard vessels had an unsafe and unprofessional encounter as the USS Sirocco and the USNS Choctaw County transited Monday through the Strait, the narrow mouth of the Persian Gulf. It says the Navy said one of the three guards, Fast Crass, raced head-on at the Sirocco before changing course basically paying, playing a, a boat chicken. It says the Navy said that Sirocco fired a warning flare during the encounter as well. A short video released by the Navy showed the encounter. It says that Amran did not immediately acknowledge the incident in the strait uh, through uh, which a fifth of all of the oil trades. So that was, again, that was, that I believe it was the uh, Strait of Hormuz that he specifically mentions. So very, very very uh very little thing that most people this would just go right over their heads or they wouldn't pay attention it's not going to be talked about at the water cooler something like this could have started something way bigger uh, but luckily it was just a game of chicken or at least that's what it seems if you want to call in on this or any of the other stories give me a call at 2244-006273 that number is down there it's actually going to be scrolling by right now and make sure to go check it out all right, Nancy B. Wild, Charity1956, thank you. Thanks for always being there for us. Hey, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Everybody have a positive attitude. There's going to be uh, some more kind of negative stuff coming up here. So if you are easily stressed out, you might want to tune out because it is not, not getting better, unfortunately. But we can all, it's how you look at things. Uh, make sure to treat all of the callers well and, and respectful. And again, that's one of the few things that can get you muted or uh, kicked out is talking badly about other people. All right. And then, uh, Dex, while you get our next caller on, which it does look like we have uh, we have another one lined up. It looks like Ragda, a first-time caller, talking about her uncle is a uh, political prisoner. All right. And then... Uh, while you do that, I just want to remind everybody, if you haven't already, make sure to go over to marfuglenews.com slash prep. And not only can you get uh, long-term survival food as far as MREs that are sealed and then uh, double sealed in the case of the month supply and the three-month supply into buckets, 
Uh, you can also get all sorts of gadgets, uh, such as power banks, as far as water filtration systems. The Alexa Pure Pro is a fraction of the cost as some of these uh, more talked about ones, and it is an, an absolute monster of a uh, filter. It is a water filtration system that can get rid of 206 contaminants, including, uh, of course, your fluoride, your pharmaceuticals, your lead, your chlorine, all of the heavy metals, everything, and it can do a whole lot at the same time. As Dex pointed out, there are smaller filters as well. There's life straws. There's all sorts of stuff over there. So make sure to go to marfuglenews.com slash prep. When you do so, you uh, not only will you get a discount on certain things, like a three-month supply is $150 off on uh, long-term survival food, but you'll also be helping our channel at the same time. Uh, that way, you are getting something out of it. You are helping our channel, and, of course, you, in most cases, get a discount. All right, and then let's uh, let's get Ragda on. First time caller talking about her uncle is apparently a prisoner, so I'll, I'll let her do the talking. Ragda, are you live? Yes, I'm here. All right, Ragda. Um, so tell us your story. What's going on? Calling from Florida. Yeah. Um, so I'm calling about my uncle. Um, he's a political prisoner in um, his country, and um, so he has been detained since September of 2021. This is actually the second time that he's detained. Um, he's being held without any conviction or um, charges. So he, there, there hasn't been any kind of due process or any, like court hearings to um, let us know why he's being held. Um, he was like detained, like I said, in September of 2021. Um, he was initially told that he was going to be held for 60 days, I believe it was. I'm sorry, 90. So it's three months. Um, and then after the three months came, they told him they were going to hold him for another three months. And then that happened again at six months. And then at nine months, which was just here in June, um, it was the day that he was supposed to be released. They came back to him and told him that he was going to be held for another three months. So he decided to, um, he is a dialysis patient. So he does dialysis two times a, two times a week. Um, he decided that he was going to start boycotting his dialysis sessions as like, um, in, as a protest to his um, administrative detention. Um, so I just really kind of wanted to bring light to that. Um, people often don't know here in this country what goes on over there in this country and how they treat um, Palestinians or um, prisoners of the Pal country. Um, so I just, yeah, I really just wanted to share that. So he is kind of doing uh, sort of a, a food strike, or but in a, in a way, right? So if he's... Not going to, if he doesn't take that, he could die though, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, dialysis is, is when they clean the um, the kidneys because the kidneys are functioning properly. And so um, if he if he doesn't have his dialysis sessions, he you know his kidneys aren't going to be able to function, and then so there can be kidney failure. Could and they so force that is, him? Uh, that could, is mandatory. For him. Do you, do you think that they would end up uh, handcuffing him and doing it anyways? Because they have to. They have to put uh, lines in him, right? They have to put IVs, and they have to use the machine yeah, to switch uh, it all out. I, I'm really not too sure. Unfortunately, we don't get to um, talk to him that often. Um, his his sons are able to talk to him, I believe it's once a month. Um, we don't know, like, the status of his health as of right now. We don't know, like, if they forced him to take the dialysis or anything like that. We just know that he, they, there was an announcement of him boycotting his session. So that was earlier last week. And so we haven't really heard much about his health since then. So is there anyone there locally other than his sons and uh, that can advocate for him or is anyone protesting or, and what was the original, is he being charged with it? I, I guess you said that they don't have much information on it, but does he does he know why he's there? Is there an accusation that's not no. true? Or? Unfortunately not. Um, uh, over there, they kind of just um, they will help hold people under the pretense of administrative detention, and there is not really a definition for administrative detention, so it's just kind of that they hold the people for uh, kind of in, like, they don't announce how long it will be or they'll say it, it's for this amount of time and then it might get extended and there, there's never any kind of due process or any any examples of why you would be in 
detained now, in the prisons over is, there. Is he a political figure on on the Palestinian side? Is that what is going on? Um, uh, he he really isn't. Um, kind of being Palestinian, your your whole existence is kind of political. But no, he's not like a prominent political figure. He doesn't like um, act in any political parties or anything to a uh, you know a large extent where he would be known for his political act. Well, one one thing I, I would like to say, though, is, is most places in the world, uh, we are blessed. And there are some places in the world, uh, again, that's why they, they say people for people to be careful when they travel, depending on what country you do, if you break a law that you didn't know existed and then you end up in the prison there or the jail, uh, there are really horrible things that go on all around the world. And we are so sheltered from uh, so much of that, we don't realize there's people like your uncle that are suffering or in the in the back of a jail cell and there's not really much that anybody can do about it uh, they can get the word out people can protest people can do that uh, and put pressure on them and sometimes that's worked but if you don't have enough uh, I guess if you don't have enough word of mouth or enough people to talk about it then I, I just wonder how many people are sitting in the, the backs of, of cells that what if they didn't have family did they just sit there until they die uh, pretty sad. They might have made a Facebook post, yeah. or or they might have taken a picture with the wrong person, or they might have said, "I support this person." Mm -hmm. You know that happens in other countries. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's it's it. We are really sheltered here, and we are very fortunate with you know our constitution and stuff like that that ensures that we have those rights, like due process, where they don't have stuff like that in other countries. Don't get me wrong. Our our country uh, is it's getting these things stripped away. The things that we are uh, kind of spoiled with, but we we still have an amazing system here. We you know in the U.S. at least. Uh, same with the U.K. Same with Australia to a, to an extent, right? Uh, well, so is there? Do you want to put his name out there, or what would help? How can we help? Um, definitely. Um, so his there is an Instagram that my cousin made. It's um, it's at free underscore j a m a l z a i d it's free underscore the malzid um that's just like it's, it's mainly in arabic but there are translations of it um it's just like my, my cousin made the page to kind of get the word out and he spread it with other um pages from the pal country but it's not you know mainstream here of course like for people that are looking about look at stuff in pal country you'll see that but other than that all right. Well, so anybody that could even share, a, I would really appreciate that. Uh, Dex, you probably don't have that link. Is there a way that you can uh, send it to Dex and then we can put it on the website? And if people do, uh, uh, rag, do rag to text it to me. We yeah. have a text going. So sending it. Yeah, if you text mm -hmm. that link to Dex, we can put it on the website and those who feel they want to support or go over there and like it or up the post or whatever you do on Instagram, uh, you can do so. And uh, I, I'm sorry that that's happening. I, I know that when you have flesh and blood sitting over in, in some sort of jail cell, the one thing is, is, you know, you're not there. And most people, they, they don't, you know, they don't realize that, I guess they don't have empathy. Like <coughs> the guy is, if he was on either side of that border, he would probably be in a bad position in either one of the, the systems that they have there. So I hope uh, I'm praying for your uncle mm -hmm. and I'm praying that everything works out and, and justice is served, uh, whatever that may be. So, well, thank you, Ragda. Uh, is it say Ragda or Ragda? It Ragda. Thank Ra you. Ragda. Well, uh, beautiful name. Thank you so much. And it's your first time called. Don't make it your last. Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks for taking my call. All right. Bye-bye. That was Ragda uh, from Florida. And there's, you know, just there's all sorts of scenarios that are playing out when you have, uh, of course, now over 4,000 just in the chat and thousands of people that may see this. There are so many different scenarios out there. Uh, there's people in every single sort of position out there watching. So uh, I'm praying for you, Ragda, and your uncle. And uh, sorry, it, sorry that he has to go through that. Um, all right, and then G conducts new missile defense test even as U.S. pushes ban on space tests. 
It says that G's military conducted a space-based missile defense interceptor test claiming to have successfully targeted ballistic missile in space. The Chinese Defense Ministry said on Sunday the test involved hitting a target missile with a high-speed interceptor missile in space. The ministry said in a statement, it says, quote, the test reached its expected goals, uh, and it says adding that the test was defensive and not aimed at any country. It was the sixth missile defense test by the Xi uh, and his country, highlights Beijing's efforts to develop missile defenses despite frequent state denunciations of the U.S. missile defense systems as destabilizing. So basically saying that, you know, us having missile defense systems is destabilizing. Meanwhile, they're making them. Few details were provided on the test that involved the firing of a land-based missile at a target ballistic missile. So, kind of funny that, uh, you know, the timing of this, as Elon is now possibly going to get wrangled into being contracted to make spaceships for the military and for Space Force, you, of course, have all of this going on a couple days after this test, and then... All of this news that essentially they are coming up with these defenses. Dax. Yeah, so this is this is like some new light on what we were reporting yesterday, right? We were talked about them intercepting, but we didn't realize this is in space. We didn't realize to the level they took it. And so we, you know, we were kind of like, well, you know, does this really mean something? But uh, the fact that they're doing this up at such a higher altitude, I guess, is very significant. Um so, yeah, I think it's you're spot on and a lot of others are spot on, especially in our own government, to worry about this as, as a new capability. OK, so if they can hit a missile in space, what is stopping them from hitting several or all of our uh, satellites or exactly the ISS? They now have their own kind of ISS thing getting set up. So that's kind of freaky. <laughs> and uh Elon, of course, is now getting wrangled into it. All right. Uh, there's a few people I want to thank. Thank you, guys. Uh, Margaret David, I appreciate that. Thank you for your support. A couple of people that uh, popped in last night after the show <clears throat> show had ended, but Shoutcher started. Stephen McMahon and EOD Vet, thank you so much. Uh, be Real Beast, EMP would be my key fab, be okay in the ignition. Oh, okay, would my key fob be okay in the ignition? that it uh being that it's grounded through the ignition you know that's a that's a question for andrew but i believe he's in chat he may would. have answered it i don't think he i don't think it would actually i did andrew say no because yeah even if the i don't metal's know i didn't it, see the answer but i think uh yeah i'm sure he probably did if he saw it but yeah he's in chat but he um but i would think that that's a very small device and i know a lot of the latest information, including what we reported on our channel here, that was that okay? these small devices have uh, more protection because they're actually, A, they don't have a big footprint, and B, more modern devices have a lot of uh, shielding around them, right? Well, not only if it was a digital, if it was one of the new keys that goes in, the actual fob goes in, then I would think so. Uh, but if it was an actual key key, then even if the fob does go, you still have the actual key, right? If it's a key fob with a key, but if it's a new key that is like, um, you know, keyless entry type fob, then yeah, I don't know if it's actually inserted into the car like Tesla's. I think they put the fob in the car, uh, but you know, uh, Kenny Cam's showing love and then love to the fam. Stay aware, stay thankful, stay showing on everyone possible. Hey, Kenny Cam's, thank you so much. And I guess the key message there is be thankful, be grateful. Uh, just be grateful. We are alive today. There's all sorts of bad going on. We, it's all perspective. You got to keep positive and you have to find solutions to what is going on. All right. EMP shield popped in. Andrew. Hey, what's going on, man? This is literally the best place to hear the real news. Adam Dex and Fugle fam. Thank you for all you do. Hey, EMP shield. Thank you. I appreciate that. And, uh, Andrew, again, you guys are, if you guys don't know that the company is actually run by, uh, folks in our community. In fact, Andrew actually had a YouTube channel before he even was with uh, EMP Shield. He's a prepper himself. Uh, most of the people there are. They've even sent us Christmas videos of their went back when they were in their tiny factory. Uh, now EMP Shield, of course, is used uh, all over the place. So again, make sure to go over and check them out. They are they actually support creators, other uh, and I believe they even support creators that aren't affiliates. So. The, the, it's Andrew supporting. So it's really great, great guy in inside and out. 
Pollyanna, thank you so much. Zippy Moons, thank you for your support. Love you guys. All right, Virginia Prepper uh, posted a video of reading a letter I got from Money Metal that came with the gold I bought. Talks about inflation. Very interesting, informative letter. Uh, Virginia Prepper, if you could take a uh, picture of it or something and scan it or send it to me, I would love to read it. And then Nelson Antecito, Antecito, I, I'm sorry, I, I missed you in the beginning, from Canada. I hope you're still here, uh, but if you end up watching the replay, thank you so much for your support. And then Ariel's Pervy Perspective says, much love, Fugle fam, from Ariel and Mike. Glad you guys are still together. That is awesome to hear. Always, always good to, to see that you guys are doing well. All right, and then... Uh, shout out to Gone Girl Triple Seven. Hope wherever you are, love you. And then Christian End Times. Did you see my video on self service California? No, not yet. But I will try to check it out. If you can send me a link, I would appreciate that. Uh, if you tag me on uh, Twitter at Marfugal, I can most definitely check it out. All right, and then. Let's see here. There we go. All right. Um, and then, uh, let's see here. We've got... On deck. It looks like Coal Cracker. Man, long time. So, Coal Cracker is on deck. Coal, I know that you're sitting there being patient. So, we just got a couple more articles to get through. And then we'll get you on deck. A former U.S. general compared Vlad's conflict to, in UKR to a heavyweight boxing match and said a knockout blow is coming. Uh, <laughs> which side, though? It says a former U.S. general compared back and forth fighting with Vlad and UKR to a boxing match as the conflict in Eastern European country nears the fourth month uh, mark. It says it's a heavyweight boxing match. Mark Hurtling, the former top commander of the U.S. Army Forces in Europe, wrote in a Twitter uh, thread late Monday night, in two months of fighting, there has not yet been a knockout blow. It will come as Vladian forces have become more depleted. I, it sounds like he's saying that, uh, that they're going to somehow lose. Uh, I don't or that something big is going to happen. Hopefully he doesn't know anything. Uh, Hurtling said fighting between the two sides in eastern UKR's Dunboss region is like a punch-counterpunch fight where artillery exchanges, counterattacks, and moving front lines makes progress hard to come by. The Dunboss fight was a has been a slugfest for over two months, uh, so an expectation would be an advancement on one side or the other. That's not happened. Hurtling said that while both Vlad and UKR continue to face casualties, uh, hundreds of troops are reportedly uh, unalived every day. UKR can, for now, enjoy the advantage of greater will and morale. So one of the things that to think about is why all of these stories like the ghost and all of these stories come out is for that will and morale, even though they're facing the Vladian military. Um, I think if you're smart, you'll realize that uh, Vlad is not, I I don't think he's just going to fail and, and put his tail between his legs and turn around. Uh, I also think that people are making it look like they're just bumbling idiots. They don't know what they're doing, uh, but they are fighting essentially NATO infrastructure. They're fighting uh, US, UK. They're, they're fighting NATO. Uh, they have, uh, um, um, I think about 100,000 of the UKR troops have been trained by NATO. Uh, 8,000 a year for the last few years now. So there's there was something to be said about that. It's not like they're just fighting, uh, you know, some dudes in tents or something. Uh, plus, he sent in all of his, like, crappy stuff first. It's, it's like this is all on purpose. Maybe it's for a show. I don't know. Maybe it's for a game show in, in Vlad country. Don't know. But what I do know is that I don't believe basically anything about either country uh, I guess I will believe what is going on uh, when it's over and we really find out what's happening and then up to seven <clears throat> Belarusian battalions amassed on UKR border UKR Ministry of Defense so if you have been following this last week you would know we have talked about the recent deployments in the US 
Uh, we have deployed NATO is amassing troops, a lot of troops along different borders. So I, I personally think something is about to happen. And maybe that's why the general, Mark, uh, Mark Hurdling, <clears throat> maybe he's seeing the same thing. Like something is about to go down. And I, I'm not trying to say this to scare somebody. I'm, I'm just saying this to kind of tell you what we, what we think after the last two weeks of everything that we have reported on and found out. Uh, especially from Fuglefam. We have Fuglefam in UKR and in uh, Vlad country. There are people that are all over the world that are watching us. And th this is uh, all of a sudden we are uh, now deploying and putting troops all over the place. And all of those ships. Two weeks ago I told you that those ships were loading up the resupply ships. And those are the ships that, you know, head out. Uh, to re go resupply an actual battalion or and and missions, it says there are as many as seven Belarusian battalions on the border between Belarus and UKR. It's uh, and it says on the border of Brest and Gomel Oblasts, and it says right now that's about thirty-five to four thousand personnel. But it should be understood that there are also Vladian troops there. I will not say how many. But there are a number of settlements where they are stationed. It says the Belarusian army has about 60,000 soldiers in total. Uh, but Lukashenko's government wants to increase it by another 20,000. So they're actively recruiting Belarusians into the army. Furthermore, given that Belarusian side now provides Vlad with all of the logistics, it is entirely possible that the Vlad's... Uh, we'll be able to transfer some additional reserves to Belarus quite quickly and perhaps prepare for an offensive. But it is important to be prepared for this. As of now, we haven't seen that yet. That was, of course, Defense Ministry spokesman. So I think something is going on here, and obviously the public will find out very, very last. I would, I would buckle up because there's definitely something in the making. That's my opinion. What's yours? Let me know. All right. And uh, Dex, it looks like we have patiently waiting. Cole Cracker is on the phone. Will you get Cole Cracker on the phone? Just remind people, if you want to protect yourself against EMP, as I was talking about, Andrew, this is a really awesome company. If you haven't heard of them before, uh, they make a device which essentially changed the market on this. Uh, it is uh, called an EMP shield, and it protects you against electromagnetic pulses and CMEs. So this will not only protect you against a man-made attack as far as uh, the devices protect your car. You can get one for your house. You can get one for your RV, even your ham radio. There's many devices that they make for different things. And this is, again, the same company that has been called up like uh, from agencies like DHS, DOD, and, of course, the Demso team helping protect the Texas grid. Go over to marfuglenews.com slash EMP to get yours. And remember, you will get a grandfathered in $50 discount. And then, of course, if they have any sort of discounts going, uh, our discount is always stacking. So make sure to go and check regularly for sales. Uh, I know, uh, uh, again, that they have been more than amazing to the Fugle fam. Uh, great, great news coming as far as uh, soon. So we'll talk about that later. But yeah, make sure to get over there. It's 100% American made and it is Keystone military tested. It's a veteran owned business and it will protect you, uh, protect your devices and keep your stuff running after a massive, massive event. Not to mention, it will protect you against lightning. Marfuglenews.com slash EMP. I would highly recommend getting this before you need it rather than after. All right, let's, uh, Cole, Cole Cracker, you're live on Marfugal News. Hello. Can right. you hear me? Yes, we can. What's going on, Cole Cracker? Oh, great. How are you doing, Marf? How you been? I have been good. So how how are you? Good. You know what? I have to I have to say it. it the the energy in the upper atmosphere is positive. I've seen a lot of people in the chat saying positive stuff, and I feel positive. I painted my porch today. You know, even though I had an incident yesterday with my one year old and. I remember when I called before, I put the picture up. I sent you the, sent that 4D picture. You put it up on screen of him inside uh, her womb. 
Uh, yes, yeah. I don't know if you remember Point Nine. No, no, yeah. No, I, I remember. But, uh, well, uh, he, 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 uh, we usually leave him in the car. He thinks he's driving a NASCAR at, at 14 months. You know, it's great. But he's, he's in there and usually have the window up a little bit, but it happened so quick. I just looked for one second and he, he fell out the window. Luckily, God, somebody was on our side. The positive thing about it is he didn't even come out with a scratch. He landed on his back, but anything can happen that quick. But you're right. Stay positive. I, and I'm sorry. My ear, my ear, my right ear is getting just really bad. Um, what fell out the window? Can you say that again? Was it an animal or a person? No, the the my son. Oh he, my he goodness! He came out the window on and on himself, like trying to get out of the car, like but to, off the window. Yeah, I mean it was such a like my heart went like through my throat, and I could just I heard the thump. I'm like, oh my god! I I'm just because right away you think the worst. Baby's crying, but it's it just that quick, that quick. And he's in it every day, every day. You know, he wants to drive my truck or he wants to go in the car and he just holds the wheel and, you know, but the window was even up a little bit. So he couldn't like face wise. And he, he grabbed that thing and pulled himself over that quick. Oh but my luckily gosh. God, somebody was on our side and, and, uh, and not, he didn't come out with nothing. Not even a little scratch. Oh, that is a blessing. See, that's a, that's it. That's another reason. It's like there's these little things that happen that people don't actually take kind of a, uh, a kind of a, a mental list of the things that we should be absolutely grateful for. That is scary. Uh, I know where you. I, I've landed where you land, and you're like, how am I not hurt? Uh, it's just uh, that's a miracle. Well, I'm I'm very glad that your son wasn't hurt. I did when you said because he was driving. I'm like, and then 14 months. So you basically had him on your lap, and he he they're driving with daddy, and then yeah. pulled himself out the window yeah. and flipped. Man, that is nuts. That fast, like just they're they're strong. They're like they're they're growing so quick. Uh, I think the world's spinning faster. Or something's going on because these kids are just next thing you know out there. I mean, I'm sure everybody says that, but it just seems like something's in the water. I don't know. Oh, okay, in, in a good way. Well, you know that that <laughs> we did a poll, and besides the whole like, oh, you know, time flies when you're when you're having fun, or uh, as you get older, it does go fast. It feels like it gets faster, right? Uh, but other people, even sure, kids, sure. even kids, are saying that it feels like the world is going faster and there might actually be a scientific reason behind that. Uh, they even say like the, the earthquake mm -hmm. in 2004 and the earthquake in 2011, uh, the, uh, the boxing day and the Japanese tsunami that changed. It rocked the entire world to the point where it put it off kilter. It, just the tiniest changes could mess up our internal clocks and make it feel like it is actually going faster. Uh, for last year, it seemed like 2020 or 2019. There was one year where it seemed like the time was messed up. I don't. It, it's when I asked that question, and and everybody said that it seems like time is moving faster. It's just like you blink, and it's you're five years older, ten years older. It's it's really insane, and I and it's not just like a, you know you're getting older and it goes faster. It actually seems like it's going faster. I'm glad you brought that up because one of the topics that I was calling on and just it was a short topic. Dex has a video. Don't play it. But if people want to go there and learn about the North and Pole, North Pole, South Pole, you know, when we hit that 40 degree mark, uh, that's just what you're talking about in a sense. That slightest tilt. Well, we've been moving 5.2 miles every month now, the North Pole. So it's moving quick and it's close to 40 degrees. And what happens is if you hold the compass and, the, and you rotate to 40 degrees, it will flip. And that guy shows the experiment. It's his experiment. It's his theory. And I'm basing his theory off of the time that we have until that happens. It's a mathematical procedure he went through. Brilliant. And I agree with the guy. So if people want to, I'm telling everybody go there and, and give the guy the best love and listen to him. Listen to the theories 
and watch because a lot of people don't know or even don't know what the magnetosphere or, or magnetic force or magnetic field they 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 want to claim they do but if you want to go and watch i i suggest you do it's very interesting so it gives us nine months until this happens so it runs into theory if you look back history repeats itself why is all this stuff going on why is it going on with the military something's going to happen well what if you went back go back 1943 in that era and you'll notice that the same thing happened it's because they want to get more recruitments for the military so they want to get more people to help so they put on these it's all psychological they've been studying us forever so they know already what manipulates our mind psychologically when they put it out on you know on your phones especially now pda devices changed everything so when they put them on the pdas and put them on the tvs and yes when that caller called when that first caller called he's he's right on the nose everybody knows it and it's algorithms like you said but the stuff that you talk about and you can go back in the past and look at all your videos there they are they're, they're, every single one are archived and you can look and go backwards take a time to go backwards and look i'm talking even two years when when the, the you know nuclear treaty deal when he let uh, them fly over us just go back and then come forward and think why did why did the why did our military you know why did they buy up all that I mean, it's, why did they do that? And then just what your topic was tonight, I've been waiting almost a year for you to put this topic up. It's like we have a telepathic mind. I never met you, never stood next to you. But if I was in front of you conversating, we would be almost alike, identical minds. And the way we think, I watch every show, and it's sometimes I get to call in, but it's, it's weird how the mind works. And I think the positivity is because people are elevating their minds into something of a higher dimension, which we fully don't understand. But if people continue to do that, things will get better. If people so understood, don't forget, it's the people. Well, that that's why I I there is kind of I I think that there should be a shift in even how we cover things. I want to make sure that if we are talking about negative things that we also talk about this can this can work this can be better this cuz i believe that yeah, uh sure. I, I and after looking at even scientific studies of it uh, I, I, you can read somebody's brain waves from outside of their head i think that uh you know i i do think that that there is something you to can. be said you can no, you control can. your own own history and your own uh world and everybody in the audience should be trying to think positively or even look at the studies on on even if you smile more if you smiled even if you force a smile it will actually help your health i mean it's just it's like we need to start being very positive and i have always said like don't put down other people that was kind of like i guess that's like don't put other people down is is kind of making that happen right we should say push people up just push sure, people sure. up and and be positive without a doubt and want peace you know don't be anti-war be pro-peace you know we don't uh we're, we're, too bad everybody couldn't be like that <laughs> yeah too well, bad everybody couldn't be like that but well the, it's the hard problem is, this it, is the problem Your everybody's topic, got problems what you, were, what you were talking about your topic tonight the problem about this is that that certain things uh it's it's advanced if you listen to musk certain things have gone to his his main thing that I listen to and it sticks in my mind is what he says about the ant pile. I don't know if you heard that one, but he said that you're you know we're running a bulldozer and there's an ant pile there. He says we just keep going to make the road. Sorry ants, but we're here to make a road. Well, the same thing with AI. Humans are just in their way. So you said tonight that they create they 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 were making something for up there. Okay, well if you put all this, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse. Me. You put all this together and and go what what I said there in series a little bit, and then you can tie it in. I'm going to tell you something. This is this might well. I got to watch what I say, and if I could talk to you somehow on a secure or off, uh, I I would love to talk to you. But uh, it's been over two years, so 
the stuff that they, they, they always tell us, they want us to hear bits and pieces of it, but they don't tell us all the truth and whatever they tell us, you know, so it, it's, give fun. me, give it's me an fun. example. Give me an example of, of stuff like you've watched the, so people that are brand new, if somebody has actually, and I, there's very few, but if you've watched every show for however long, or even watched most of them over the last two, three years, wouldn't you say you see a lot of the things that we talked about years ago and we we questioned and now it's coming true? It's not like we have a crystal ball. A lot of this stuff yeah. is telegraphed through mainstream media. People go, oh, all, all they do is read mainstream media. Guess what? Mainstream media is telling us little pieces of the puzzle and they are telling us a piece of the puzzle and then in the article they'll say, it's the opposite of what we are saying. All of Look at all the debunk things. Every debunk right now is almost, it's all, almost all real. It's all a fact, and then they debunk it. So they give you the fact, then they say, it's not true. And people go, oh, okay, it's not true. Yeah. It says it on Snopes, so it, it can't be true. Just like everything on the internet that's you like hear is, is real, right? Well, everything you hear on the internet that's yeah, debunked that's doesn't mean it's debunked. They won't even give you the actual fact of why it's debunked. They just say, it, the, you know, it's preposterous, it's not. It's like, okay, where's the proof it's not? They don't have it. So give me an example of like some, of just what you've been looking at right now compared to a couple of years ago. I find examples every day. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> yeah, every day. Oh my I mean, I'm I'm one of these people though that that uh I'm 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 free minded. I'm I'm you know, I I it try to intake a lot of the upper atmosphere, space, astrology, sort of, you know, uh, so, sociology, I guess, and psychology. But, you know, what the stuff that's going on now, yes, without a doubt, but it's made that way. Now you got to look on the psychological aspect of it is that, that they're trying to get people all over the place to thinking. So everybody, so if they create that and they create fear, then they have control. It's all about control. So, but the the thing that, that has me a little rough on my feathers, <laughs> if I shall say, is that the stuff that you're just talking about now has been over two years that it, that it's been in, been in play. So it's just coming out now. That's what I'm saying. So we're behind. It was, it was around, uh, the, the, ex the explosion that happened at that one area and people questioned if it was, uh, if it was done by a sub or, a. do you remember when the sub hunters were around Bay? Root. I mean, that was yeah, yeah. That around then is when just a couple days later, uh, that explosion happened. It was very mysterious, and a lot of people had their theories. Right? It was just a couple days later that the DoD came out and says, "Oh yeah, they weaponized space and directed energy is real." People got kicked off. I knew YouTubers that were small when I was small, and they got booted off early on because they said that directed sure. energy was real, and now it is a fact. I remember. I remember when they did, and and yes, it is. And uh, you know what? I there. I want to say some stuff, but I can't. I, honestly, I'm not messing around. You know me from way back. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm not. You know, I don't trust anything that that, that anything because it's the, it's that. You think about it. What what you said about the technology and AI and all of that stuff, right? No, no they're saying the future. No, no, no. It's already here. It's already here. It, psychologically, they want us to think that it's going to be coming or what if this happens. It's already here. They already have it upon us. They're prepping. And people don't even know it. They're prepping us and and trying to get us used to the fact. Yep. It, it seems like through a test. six months they're to a year before. A test. I'm telling you. Yeah, they, they always well, see, the thing is, I live lead in us in. Northeast Pennsylvania. You know, and you're over there. So they're 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 picking out uh, places. Now, I I have to say it. My name Sam sounds it. I, I live in the coal region, so I'm on carbon. I mean, what was one part of the thing you when know, the administration got it? Well, I would you know put it together. That's what the part of the, the you know Green Deal. Uh, it's just to get rid. Of, I mean, I've been in the natural gas field for 20 years, and I've all the way up the coast in the mid, mid all the way on, on the United States. I have installed a uh, 42 inch pipe that you can walk through bending over and it's only from about four feet deep. 
I'm just saying it's all me. I look at it differently. I, I go backwards. History repeats itself. I look and I go back and then I come forward. I keep doing that. And you can fit, you know, I, and then once you see, that's why Elon Musk said, if you want the answers, keep looking up. You'll find them. You'll find what you're looking for. And it's true. And, and since the thing started a couple of years ago, I don't even know how long it's been. November 2019, when we've seen that on TV, that's when it enabled different regions. This is why what you're speaking about, the race to space, it enabled them to cross borders because it was a worldwide pandemic. So they couldn't stop anybody from being in their other person's territory and so forth. But they're using, Elon is putting these, uh, you know, stuff up, satellites and stuff. Well, them satellites are equipped with like micro satellites. And they charge, I seen a beam last night. Last night I was sitting there, I'm pretty sure it was last night or the night before I seen a, a beam and you can see, if you go Mr. BBV 323 you'll see he had his video yesterday. And I'm like, no, that's, I've seen it. There's that's the picture. That's what we got. That's that's the pictures we got from Mike H. Um, I've seen it. It's, uh, I Mr. watched it, and I know, what it, I know what it did. I almost thought about I tell you? resubmitting. I, I almost sent uh, Mike H and yeah. just forwarded right to Mr. MB33 because he has other footage right here. This is what I'm talking about. So actually, hold on. Let me make sure. How did I do that? Okay. Here, look at this. Look Where at this thumb, thumbnail. Look at that. Okay. Th there's some weird stuff going on here. Uh, I'm there. And uh, are we forgetting that they said that uh, they said that uh, the, and by they, the Space Force commander, two different Space Force commanders, and one of our generals in the mil Marines said that there is a conflict going on above us. And I'm like, this is what's wrong. Like, there is something most definitely going on. And every time they say, oh, it was just SpaceX. SpaceX explains it all. So in the middle, it says, did a portal open? Woman describes a tunnel and a conduit buzzing. Mike H sent me multiple angles of this. And it's not like this can't, this isn't like f the cool thing is there were so many people that saw this from so many different places that it's, it's absolute. Uh, it's not something that was Photoshopped at first. I thought I was I've like, this, this I looks like that. it's Photoshopped that, uh, that ring. They say it's because, and, and everybody goes, Oh, well that makes sense. The, the fuel dump or whatever they say it is. That's what they say, that, uh, that it was a fuel dump from a SpaceX. But I'm wondering how many of these are military rockets or something else that's going on? Or how many are part of a mission yeah. that's doing something scary You're in right. space? You're right. You're right. You're right. Because this thing here was was straight across the sky when I seen it. And I've seen, seen it move. I've seen it move. The whole beam, though, it was, across, it was a beam shot. I didn't see the circle. I seen the beam. You should have seen the big, oh my. All right, so yeah, and I know where I'm at, I'm, at, I'm located. There's two secret ones within an hour radius for me, due uh, north, uh, northeast. So, so you, there's two underground, you know, so we're, don't forget, I live in a coal region, so what do you think, you know what I mean? I mean, uh, they dig into the coal vein, you know what I mean? They use that. Uh, but anyway, I, I don't want to get off topic too much, but yeah, there's a lot. Fort Indian Town Gap is, is down by Harrisburg, Harrisburg's capital of Pennsylvania, you know, so state capital. Well, so Cole Cracker, we're out you of know, time. I'm pretty close. I'm in Howard. Did you have one more thing you yeah. want to say before you go? Yes. Everybody has to stay positive no matter what. And if you think you hear stuff, you know, whatever, in the background, or you think, you know, I meant, did my phone just say something? Or, listen, it's it's really happening. You're not going crazy. It's They're using the Bluetooth, and they're using the stuff around you. It's all of what part of it is. It's all connected. It's AI just trying to stay positive. Just like you said, Marv, keep doing a good job. X and Wads, some of you guys. Uh, yeah. Hopefully I can talk to you off air or on a private I need I need to talk to you it's important. Get, get to me on Twitter, okay? DM me and and put Cole Cracker in the top, right. top of the message. All right, Cole Cracker, thank you so much.
you have a wonderful night. That was Cole Cracker. Uh, again, thank you, and thanks, everybody, for being positive. Thanks for pushing each other up and pushing up the caller. Uh, Mr. MB33, I love his channel. He does a really awesome job, and he's like a, he's like the this community's um, – He's like the truth. Or, he's not a weatherman. He's like a UFO weatherman or something. I don't know how you would explain it because he goes over the pictures that people send him. He does a really great job of going through and grabbing everything. Um, I actually thought that that picture was Mike H. sent it to both, uh, but it turned out it was somebody else named Sean or something and then had Linda and at all these different angles. Um, I got that from Mike H. And I was thinking, I, I, I'm like, this does not even look real. I told you guys about it the other night, and uh, I'll still get that. Uh, I may, I may have him on the next show. We'll we'll try to get Mike on and and just explain what he saw. But I'm telling you, there's there is something more going on above us. This is not a game. This is something is happening. Our world is changing rapidly. Look at everything that has happened. Look at all the movements and all of the different changes. They're drastically, they're scraping the entire, uh, the entire population, and they are like changing it over and putting everything together. And it's going to be one piece of pie instead of hundreds of pieces of pie. It's just absolutely nuts. All right. And then, uh, yeah, just crazy, crazy stuff going on. Uh, Dex, Taiwan scrambles 20, 29 jets to warn away G planes in its air defense zone. Here we go again. It's like uh, it's on stuck on repeat. So can you, for the people that have just tuned in today, can you go over kind of how, you know, the previous kind of entries into this and how much this has kind of put together, put together kind of the stuff that we have talked about in the last year and uh, all the stuff that has happened in Taiwan. Oh, wow. That, I mean, it's a lot. So if, if you don't know anything about the ADES, uh, which is the defense zone, um, air defense identification zone. It's a border in which, you know, they get into a range and where they sort of take on a defensive position, right? And they're, and they have to identify and, and they want to see what's happening. Well, uh, Xi has gone into this zone numerous times, uh, probably more than 20 times uh, now. They, we've had records of the most number of planes. It seems like every every week there's a new incursion into the ADIS. Every, uh, every month there seems to be a new number of, of planes and different types, whether they're fighters or boomers or um, all sorts of different things. So this is, it's almost like, uh, like, like you said, it's on repeat. So here we go again. Uh, with another plane coming into the ADES and uh, Taiwan is actually scrambled or did scramble jets. Um, and it was 29 aircraft uh, that uh, they had to sort of warn away uh, from the zone. So the one thing that I want to focus here on is there's part of this is, you know, pressure. Part of this is uh chest beating from G and like, and, but part of this is not part of this is test runs. It's really every time we run a bunch of planes in, how does uh, Taiwan react, right? Who, who gets scrambled on the ground, who gets scrambled in the air, where do they come from? These are continuous tests that they're doing so that they can prepare and they can have a plan for when they actually go beyond the ADIS and with whatever forces they bring through to know what the reaction will be and where it will come from. Um, so that's what this is. This is this is ultimately it's a test. It is a continuous test. They do it over and over again to see how they react. It applies pressure uh, not only to the country uh, of, of Taiwan, but it also, um, you know, it, it applies pressure to the fact that they have to scramble jets. When they put jets up, that's, you know, that's effort, work and risk. Right. They have to keep doing that. So the more that they keep doing this, the more G gets information so that he can more be more prepared when the time comes uh, and the more it weakens or or, uh, you know, causes uh, struggle with Taiwan to have to deal with it over and over again. They've done every test too, every war game that they could possibly do. 
uh, from all angles of the island. They have surrounded the island now twice in just the last six months. They have done all of the water tests. They have loaded up their boats and then unloaded them. Uh, we covered that when they were, it looked like they were going to go and then they unloaded it. So they're, they're all, they're practicing to take this and then look at the words. It's super, it's just right in our face. Uh, the, the president said in, in a, one of his speeches, it said, you know, oh, we're, we're going to go back to everything made in America. Well, why? Because something is going on here, something bad. Uh, and then, oh, of course, oh, we're going to have our own semiconductor chip. Or maybe, who knows, maybe he was paid to let him take Taiwan because that has the semiconductor chip factory. It's, it's incredibly important. It, it, it's gonna, it runs the world in a technological age. Uh, that well, it doesn't run the world, but it 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 keeps it running. This is this is a giant deal, and most people are paying attention to TikTok and watching uh, the their 60, 15 second videos, sixty second videos. Meanwhile, the long form content uh, consumers are the the people that are actually looking down these roads are really afraid of what they're finding. It's it's not not good, but it, again, it's all perspective. Uh, we need to be prepared for this kind of stuff, and who knows? Maybe you might be comfortable through everything that happens. Um, I was just watching a video on um, Dex. I just watched a video done by our local King County like thing. It was the Cascadia Subduction Zone video. I believe it was King County uh, TV on YouTube. And it was talking about the Cascadia subduction zone. And they did this like scenario where Cascadia went off, the 9.0 went off, and it was a hypothetical situation. Somehow a guy that worked downtown lived, had to walk all the way to like through Beacon Hill and to West Seattle or whatever. And his family had to meet at the school and all of this. And somehow this official video left out that in 15 minutes after the earthquake, uh, or probably half an hour for the actual city of Seattle, that there's going to be a tsunami coming. And now with the new information, this is a three-month-old video. Six months ago, we found out that there it's going to be the worst disaster that the world has seen. It's going to be the worst disaster North America has seen, that's for sure. And... Uh, they they have upped now twice. They have upped the chances of it happening. It was a one in ten chance in fifty years that it will happen. So if you live in the Northwest for fifty years, you have a one in ten chance. Now it is a one in thirty seven or a one in thirty seven or a thirty seven percent chance. Who? What's to say in another year it's not going to be a seventy five percent chance? I've talked to the experts. I've talked to Chris Goldfinger. I've talked to everybody, and the chances are higher than that. And What's going to happen is it's going to be really bad. What, why this matters to this, I I think if, if somebody was to invade, I think it would be after a Cascadia or during or after or trigger it. That's the other thing. The science uh, behind these fault lines, they know enough that if they took nukes or something, they could probably trigger it. Also, new science that came out. been digging into this for my other project that I'm doing on this. It is absolutely crazy. Now scientists believe that the Cascadia could, with no time in between, trigger San Andreas, which I've said before. I've said, like, you know, any earthquake could trigger another one. In fact, an earthquake here could trigger one on the other side of the planet, like an antipode, right? But now they are looking heavily at the Cascadia subduction zone actually triggering the San Andreas with no time in between. Think about that. Because when we talk about Cascadia, it goes from Canada all the way to the beginning of California. It triggers San Andreas. That's all of California. So you're talking about the entire West Coast getting turned into rubble. It seems to me like if you had a force of, of you know millions and uh, you, you have boats that have been outfitted for now in the last five years to take people over, I don't know. I think that would be the time. Maybe that's what they're waiting for. But I do know it, it, it is very clear they are signaling that they are going to take Taiwan, whether by force or by infiltration. Either way, we need to get used to, to possible 
things happening where we might not have all of these products that we have now that are readily available because uh, the the industrial world put everything and made everything made over over there. Most don't know how much is actually made in G's country. It is scary. All right, and then uh, thank you to uh, several people over on DLive. Thank you, Chewy Weather. I love Jesus forever. DFW Jackie, Maui Racing Realtor, and Jordan B. Bear. Um, by the way, if you disagree with me, let me know in the comments below. Just do it politely. Marfugal News, the only news I use. Thanks for keeping the peace. Mods, Dex, Marf, y'all. Bussin, bussin. Zippy Moons, the first time I heard bussin was on like one of these uh, short videos of the guy making a... Uh, a a jailhouse burrito or something, and he says, bussin' or disgustin'. See, some of you guys have probably seen that guy's video. He's like a nurse, but he was in prison for a long time, I think, and he makes these videos of how they make stuff in prison, and it's it's actually pretty fascinating. He makes, uh, uh, what was it, cigarette papers out of a napkin and coffee. Just crazy stuff. And by, by the way, you know why that, that fascinates me is what if you didn't have half of the stuff you had now, or you had to MacGyver something out of nothing. And that's what they do in prison. Think about it. The, in prison, they're kind of like, like ill-prepared preppers, like MacGyvers making stuff out of some, something that doesn't. He made, he made like a, a taco out of this crazy stuff and it, like it put coffee in almost everything that all of the inventions had like coffee in it. But yeah, there's a lot of things that you can learn right now while you have the internet. If SHTF happens or Cascadia happens or any of these things happen, you're not going to have uh you're not going to have a search platform to go and say how do I do this? You're not going to have Siri. You're not going to have somebody you can just say, "Hey, how do I cook this? How do I skin an animal?" You're not going to have that. People need to get books. People need to get information now rather than later. And if you never have to use it, you got some really awesome reading. All right. And then uh, thank you, Christian End Times, Pollyanna. Uh, again, thank you, uh, Kenny Cams. Appreciate your support there. And thank you for sticking around. You're probably one of my, I want to say you're one of my oldest subscribers, right? And then uh, Marky Sparky, another super old subscriber. Thank you so much. What's going on? Bandy Bear. Lots of uh, older, uh, old school crew coming in and hanging out. Uh, Bandy Bear, thank you so much for supporting our, our independent channel here. Thank you. Stephen McMahon, Christian End Times, just sent it in Twitter to both you and Dex. All right. Thank you, Christian. I can, I can actually check that right now. All right. And then... Uh, God bless all in this house. Elon might have a government agent to begin with, but common sense says they would drag him into service. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I could see that too. And then uh, Steph, Steph Wilkes, thank you. Appreciate you subscribing. And then a few more people just popped in, so thank you guys. All right, uh, Dex, uh, by the way, thank you, Marky Sparky. I also see that you did a super thanks on the last show. Thanks for watching the replay. Uh, I always see you in the replay comments. Thank you. Uh, Bible Talk 777 was also there. It looks like, I don't know, did you make it tonight, Bible Talk? And then Trisha Ann, thank you as well. All right, uh, Dex, let's go over the, the web-only content. We have it, kind of a, a bunch of stuff here. Wow. And yeah, so exciting things going on. Make sure, please, please, please go to marfuglenews.com. Click on the thumbnail for the show. You want to get the rest of the story, but most important, go get the sign up for the giveaway. Don't miss out on your chance. This bag is being given out by Offgrid, $380 backpack. You want to make sure you're there. You want to make sure you get it. So go to marfuglenews.com, click on the thumbnail for the show. If you're on YouTube, open the description, click on show notes, or there's another link right below that'll take you to the giveaway. Make sure you do that, guys. You don't want to miss that opportunity. Um, and, you know, these when these happen, they're really great. And we, we love making sure we can give things back to the fam when we with our uh, our affiliates. So, so awesome of Off Grid to do that. So make sure you do that and make sure you get those opportunities. You can, I think you can sign up daily. 
uh, pretty much to, to get multiple entries. So don't miss it. Hey, while you're here, scroll down on the page, you're going to find overflow or the web content, uh, everything else we did not cover in today's show after you pass everything we did cover. So we went over all of the news articles. So everything that, you know, we've already talked about, it's right there. Uh, then you'll find everything else and then you'll find the callers. So all the caller information is down below. It's been updated. Uh, it's right there for you. Lots happening in the rest of the story. So, um, you know, we were talking earlier about due process and there's that famous due process conversation that's going on here in our own country. And that topic is front and center uh, around uh, in, in the uh, additional content here. Also some stuff about your, your bang bangs uh, that'll continuously be updated because they're going to keep talking about what they're going to do or not do with it. So you'll see those updates here as well. Um, other things going on, there's crypto updates, there's uh, the the O's have signed a new deal, uh, I guess, with a different streaming company. Um, find out what's happening at Stonehenge. Uh, a lot of people were there and why. It's right there on our website. And if you happen to be at a specific beach, you might want to pay attention because the sharks are moving in and you can find out what, uh, what beach that is and much more along with a lot of other things going on with DDoS attacks and even, even Kid Rock is in the news. So go take a look, marfuglenews.com, click on the thumbnail for the show. That'll get you right here to, to register for that off-grid giveaway. It'll give you the rest of the news. It's so easy. And if you're on YouTube, open the description, click that link for show notes. And there's more on the way, by the way, we are super excited. We can't tell you yet, but there's more on the way. We're always working on stuff that will, uh, again, help you guys. And then sharks getting closer to crowded beaches than you might think. This one, I, I, uh, we, we didn't have time for today, uh, but it might end up in something else because it, it's really part of this whole natural uh, weird stuff that is going on. Not only it could be related to something like the shift or something, but animals beaching themselves, these mass die offs. Uh, of course, the sharks getting closer, the, the ocean is falling apart. Uh, my, my friend that does coral reef stuff is saying that coral reefs are, are dying off. And that's something that I personally talk to somebody who dives down and sees this stuff. And it, it's, it's, uh, it's becoming very alarming. It's just like the bees disappearing. Uh, insects are disappearing off of off of everywhere. Look, if you don't believe me, if you're new here, go down. Uh, insects are disappearing, and then just leave that part blank. And put di uh, insects are disappearing in, and you click any city, any state, any country, any province, you'll see all over the world. Insects are disappearing. Uh, or look up the windshield theory. I mean, there's just so much fascinating stuff happening right now. It's it's too much to go over even in a two-hour show. Uh, Dex, thank you for your service today. Appreciate you so much. Thank you. Yeah, much love, brother. Great job. All right, and then everybody, Gary Stoven from it looks like the UK or Europe, thank you so much for your support. Thank you for uh, stopping in. Uh, thank you, everybody in chat. Now, now is the time where uh, we'll really pop into chat uh, because it is now time for the shout drill. It's not an outro, it's not a shout out, it's a shout -tro. By the way, uh, Ray's and ill, Karen Leonard, LCJC, we got a lot of mods down there. Island by the Sea, Vault 1 1, Jack B, Laura Griffith, Rose Jane, Miss Jammer. We've got Laura Griffith. Gary Stoven. Oh, UK. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. How is it in the UK? Tell me in the chat. Cybin, Rob Mills, Marky Sparky. Pop it like it's hot. I don't know. I don't like this one. So if you don't know what the shout road is, I make music on the spot with a looper. It is not supposed to be good. But what it is, is it's supposed to be a thank you to everybody that matters here, which is you. Uh, without you guys, we're nothing. And honestly, we have done this together. The Fugle fam is the, this channel wouldn't be big unless people were sharing it with fr uh, friends and family and bringing people in and say, Hey, it's a great chat. You get to meet a lot of cool people. People have made lifelong long friends, either from the chat or from our discord groups, uh, which are sadly no longer around. Uh, but again, make sure to go down there and say something nice to somebody right now. Love you guys. Thank you. And let's make a new one. Let's make a fresh one. Let's see. All right, let's do it. 
switch over Mikey. Soup on the Jumba. <laughs> 